Day 91. Judges 13-15. Again the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord, so he delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for forty years. Now there was a man from Zorah named Mano, from the clan of the Danites, whose wife was barren and had no children. The angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, It is true that you are barren and have no children, but you will conceive and give birth to a son. Now please be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you will conceive and give birth to a son. And no razor shall come over his head, because the boy will be a Nazi right to God from the womb, and he will begin the deliverance of Israel from the hand of the Philistines. So the woman went and told her husband, A man of God came to me. His appearance was like the angel of God, exceedingly awesome. I did not ask him where he came from, and he did not tell me his name. But he said to me, Behold, you will conceive and give birth to a son. Now, therefore, do not drink wine or strong drink, and do not eat anything unclean, because the boy will be a Nazi right to God from the womb until the day of his death. Then Mano prayed to the Lord, Please, O Lord. Let the man of God you sent us come to us again to teach us how to raise the boy who is to be born. And God listened to the voice of Mano, and the angel of God returned to the woman as she was sitting in the field, but her husband Mano was not with her. The woman ran quickly to tell her husband, Behold, the man who came to me the other day has reappeared. So Mano got up and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he asked, Are you the man who spoke to my wife? I am, he said. Then Mano asked, When your words come to pass, what will be the boy's rule of life and mission? So the angel of the Lord answered Mano, Your wife is to do everything I told her. She must not eat anything that comes from the vine, nor drink any wine or strong drink, nor eat anything unclean. She must do everything I have commanded her. Please stay here, Mano said to the angel of the Lord, and we will prepare a young goat for you. And the angel of the Lord replied, Even if I stay, I will not eat your food. But if you prepare a burnt offering, offer it to the Lord. For Mano did not know that it was the angel of the Lord. Then Mano said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name, so that we may honor you when your word comes to pass? Why do you ask my name, said the angel of the Lord, since it is beyond comprehension. Then Mano took a young goat and a grain offering and offered them on a rock to the Lord. And as Mano and his wife looked on, the Lord did a marvelous thing. When the flame went up from the altar to the sky, the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame. When Mano and his wife saw this, they fell face down to the ground. And when the angel of the Lord did not appear again to Mano and his wife, Mano realized that it had been the angel of the Lord. We are going to die, he said to his wife, for we have seen God. But his wife replied, if the Lord had intended to kill us, he would not have accepted the burnt offering and the grain offering from our hands, nor would he have shown us all these things or spoken to us this way. So the woman gave birth to a son and named him Samson. The boy grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him at Mahanadan, between Zora and Eshtadl. One day Samson went down to Timnah, where he saw a young Philistine woman. So he returned and told his father and mother, I have seen a daughter of the Philistines in Timnah. Now get her for me as a wife. But his father and mother replied, Can't you find a young woman among your relatives or among any of our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson told his father, Get her for me, for she is pleasing to my eyes. Now his father and mother did not know this was from the Lord, who was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines were ruling over Israel. Then Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyards of Timnah. Suddenly a young lion came roaring at him, and the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, and he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as one would tear a young goat. But he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. Then Samson continued on his way down and spoke to the woman, because she was pleasing to his eyes. When Samson returned later to take her, he left the road to see the lion's carcass, and in it was a swarm of bees, along with their honey. So he scooped some honey into his hands and ate it as he went along. And when he returned to his father and mother, he gave some to them and they ate it. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Then his father went to visit the woman, and Samson prepared a feast there, as was customary for the bridegroom. And when the Philistines saw him, they selected thirty men to accompany him. Let me tell you a riddle, Samson said to them. If you can solve it for me within the seven days of the feast, 
I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes. But if you cannot solve it, you must give me 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes? Tell us your riddle, they replied. Let us hear it. So he said to them, Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet. For three days they were unable to explain the riddle. So on the fourth day they said to Samson's wife, Entice your husband to explain the riddle to us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to rob us? Then Samson's wife came to him, weeping, and said, You hate me. You do not really love me. You have posed to my people a riddle, but have not explained it to me. Look, he said, I have not even explained it to my father or mother, so why should I explain it to you? She wept the whole seven days of the feast, and finally on the seventh day, because she had pressed him so much, he told her the answer. And in turn she explained the riddle to her people. Before sunset on the seventh day, the men of the city said to Samson, What is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? So he said to them, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have solved my riddle. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon, killed thirty of their men, took their apparel, and gave their clothes to those who had solved the riddle. And burning with anger, Samson returned to his father's house, and his wife was given to one of the men who had accompanied him. Later on, at the time of the wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. I want to go to my wife in her room, he said. But her father would not let him enter. I was sure that you thoroughly hated her, said her father, so I gave her to one of the men who accompanied you. Is not her younger sister more beautiful than she? Please take her instead. Samson said to them, This time I will be blameless in doing harm to the Philistines. Then Samson went out and caught three hundred foxes. And he took torches, turned the foxes tail to tail, and fastened a torch between each pair of tails. Then he lit the torches and released the foxes into the standing grain of the Philistines, burning up the piles of grain and the standing grain, as well as the vineyards and olive groves. Who did this? The Philistines demanded. It was Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, they were told. For his wife was given to his companion. So the Philistines went up and burned her and her father to death. And Samson told them, Because you have done this, I will not rest until I have taken vengeance upon you. And he struck them ruthlessly with a great slaughter, and then went down and stayed in the cave at the rock of Etam. Then the Philistines went up, camped in Judah, and deployed themselves near the town of Lehi. Why have you attacked us? said the men of Judah. The Philistines replied, We have come to arrest Samson and pay him back for what he has done to us. In response, three thousand men of Judah went to the cave at the rock of Etam, and they asked Samson, Do you not realize that the Philistines rule over us? What have you done to us? I have done to them what they did to me, he replied. But they said to him, We have come down to arrest you and hand you over to the Philistines. Samson replied, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. No, they answered, We will not kill you. But we will tie you up securely and hand you over to them. So they bound him with two new ropes and led him up from the rock. When Samson arrived in Lehi, the Philistines came out shouting against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. The ropes on his arms became like burnt flax, and the bonds broke loose from his hands. He found the fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it, and struck down a thousand men. Then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey I have piled them into heaps. With the jawbone of a donkey I have slain a thousand men. And when Samson had finished speaking, he cast the jawbone from his hand, and he named that place Ramoth Lehi. And being very thirsty, Samson cried out to the Lord, You have accomplished this great deliverance through your servant. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? So God opened up the hollow place in Lehi, and water came out of it. When Samson drank, his strength returned, and he was revived. That is why he named it Enhakra, and it remains in Lehi to this day. And Samson judged Israel for twenty years in the days of the Philistines. Luke 6 verses 27 to 49. But to those of you who will listen, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone takes your cloak, do not withhold your tunic as well. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what is yours, do not demand it back. 
do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them, expecting nothing in return. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Jesus also told them a parable, Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but fail to notice the beam in your own eye? How can you say, Brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, while you yourself fail to see the beam in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the beam out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Indeed, figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor grapes from brambles. The good man brings good things out of the good treasure of his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil treasure of his heart. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, he is like a man building a house, who dug down deep and laid his foundation on the rock. When the flood came, the torrent crashed against that house but could not shake it, because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not act on them is like a man who built his house on ground without a foundation. The torrent crashed against that house, and immediately it fell, and great was its destruction.